Just like the title says, I think your favorite commander is boring. I'm assuming, of course, because I'm just looking at the most popular commanders, and statistically you're probably playing one of these. And ultimately, it's a problem with modern commander design. Although I think Wizards is starting to fix it. But before I get into that, if you like my videos, consider subscribing and checking out the Patreon. So what do I mean when I say a commander is boring? Let's look at the most popular commander of all time, Atraxa. Although I think technically it was Golos, but he got hit with the Banhammer, so we'll forget about him. So Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, is a 4-4 Angel Horror for Green, White, Blue, Black. She has Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, Proliferate. With this mix of keywords, Atraxa plays offense and defense, able to fly in and deal damage to players while gaining you life, and with Vigilance, she also stays behind as a blocker as well, meaning if any player cannot profitably block her, which most likely is the case, it is always correct to swing in. And then, she does the thing for free at the end of turn. No restrictions, nothing asked. All that is required is your deck puts counters somewhere. And this generic power is why she's so popular. You can play Infect, Super Friends, plus one plus one counters, minus one minus one counters, Hydras, Fungi, Sagas, or heck, Voltron. She's got four keywords. Any equipment on her makes her pretty dangerous. And since you're in four colors, it means you can fluff out your deck with all of the best staples, making her pretty much one of the best options, if not the best option, for any of the themes listed here. But is this interesting? Commanders like this that offer generic value with very low requirements means the commander does nothing special for the deck. Let's say you're playing Atraxa Super Friends. You play her, and then you play a Planeswalker, and the walker gets more counters, and then she blocks the walker well. That's it. Nothing crazy, nothing unique, but just value over time for free. And I feel like there's a lot of commanders that are these generic value engines, where they ask very little of you and they just give you some extra bonus. Usually cards in hand, but sometimes other things. And sometimes what they ask for is so specific that the deck builds itself. Let's look at Go Shintai of Life's Origin. Three and a green for a 3-4 legendary enchantment creature, Shrine. You can pay Wooburg, tap, return target enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever Go Shintai or another non-token shrine enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 shrine enchantment creature token. So originally, there were only a few shrines, and they had the downside of not being creatures and being slow, like most value enchantments. Then we got a second set of shrines, and it made them a little bit better, but for a commander, you needed to really stretch. Maybe Captain Sisse, since she could tutor up shrines, or maybe since the shrines didn't protect you since they weren't creatures, you could play Okami. And then we got the next set of shrines, which are creatures, so they actually give you some board presence, they trigger on end step, so they're no longer slow, and they printed the perfect commander. It does all the things you need for a shrine deck. It makes shrines which can chump block, and it brings them back from the yard, and it's in all five colors. And now if you want to build a shrine deck, it's already built for you. Your commander has been selected, you have 16 cards in the other shrines, and let's say 36 lands? That's 53 cards which have already been pre-selected for you. Plus, you got Soul Ring, your other generic ramp, throw in a few Enchantress effects. They're basically custom built for any enchantment deck. Now you have like 70 cards. And this is why if you look at Ghost Shintai on EDH Rec, many of the cards in the top synergy category show up in 80% of Go Shintai decks. For reference, if we look at another generically popular and powerful commander like Korvald, the high synergy cards are not nearly in as many decks as 80%, meaning Korvald decks are more diverse than Go Shintai. This is another problem with just modern commander design. Wizards goes, hey, let's build a X deck. So they build it for you. When you run into a Go Shintai deck, you can be almost certain you know half, if not more, of the cards they're playing. But most commanders don't even ask for something as specific as shrines. Some of them are just such generic value, like Chulain just wants creatures, Markov just wants vampires, and the reward is often just putting more of the same thing into play or drawing cards. And since putting power on board and drawing cards is almost always good, these commanders are almost always powerful when they do anything. I also really hate commanders that do the thing they ask for, 
because it requires no additional synergy from you. Korvald, for example, asks you to sacrifice permanence, but he also does that on ETB and attack. You don't need anything else in your deck to have the word sacrifice on it, and you can still get value from Korvald. Same with Prosper, he gives you impulse draw and also gives you benefit for impulse drawing. So he's the reward and the engine. And I think part of the problem is not just that these commanders are boring, uninteresting value pieces. It's that so many of these are snowball-y, kill-on-site cards that spiral out of control with value. And it causes a lot of these decks to be very feast or famine. Games will come down to, did I kill your commander on the first, second, and third time you cast it, in which case you lose? Or if not, your commander snowballs, gives you a billion cards, and you just win the game. So much of your deck's value gets tied up into the commander with a lot of these that decks are just win hard or lose hard. All right, so your commander is boring, whatever. Now what? I think there are a lot of things you can do to spice up your commander deck. These days, wizard prints like a million legends every set, meaning there might be some new cards or options that you might have missed. Let's look at Dino Tribal for a moment. You could play Gishath, the most popular dinosaur tribal commander. He is generically powerful for any dino deck. But also, everyone knows exactly what this commander does, and they know they can't really let it hit them, otherwise they're going to be facing a ton of dinosaurs and be in trouble. Meaning people are more likely to hold up removal for your commander, focus you down. Now you could swap to uh, Pantlaza, maybe go for a blink theme, and a lot of people choose between these two commanders. But you might have forgotten that there are even more options. You have Owen in blue, which offers a unique way to buff up dinosaurs with keywords. There's also Waita, Trainer Prodigy. Many dinosaurs have Enrage as a mechanic, and this commander lets them fight creatures, giving you removal in the command zone and extra Enrage value, provided you build around it. These commanders are a little harder to make work. You can't just fill your deck with dinosaurs and get value. You need to build around Enrage a little bit and play some other cards that synergize with that. But it also makes your dinosaur deck one different than everyone else's, which personally is something I like. But also, since your commander isn't a generic value kill on sight card, you can slip under the radar a little bit and get some extra value, because if I only have one counter spell, I'm going to hit Gishath over Weta every single time. And you can do this with any theme. Going back to Atraxa, I want to compare her to a different Super Friends commander. Liori Spark Touched Hunter. Jeskai for a 3-3 with Flying and Vigilance, it's an elemental cat. Whenever Liori deals common damage to a player, choose a Planeswalker type until end of turn when you activate an ability of a Planeswalker of that type. Copy the ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. This is a card that doubles the abilities of a Planeswalker type specifically. So something you can do is play Jace Tribal or Chandra Tribal. And this is a unique effect that almost no other card does, copying the abilities of Planeswalkers but specifically copying the abilities of one type of Planeswalker is really unheard of. And there are so many cool, interesting ways you can build this. This can be an artifact deck with all the Karns in it. There's so many interesting, unique options that most players have never even seen before. And it does something no other commander does. And not only is Wizards printing multiple commanders for every theme, but also weirder commanders as well. Have you seen Quintorius Loremaster? Three white red for a 3-5 elephant cleric with vigilance. At the beginning of your end step, exile target, non-creature, non-land card from your graveyard. Create a 3-2 red white spirit, pay red white one, tap, sack a spirit, choose target card, exiled with Quintorius. You may cast that card this turn without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, put it on the bottom of its owner's library instead. Now, this card is a little harder to make work. It requires some setup. You need to have the instant and sorcery already in the bin. But this does so many interesting, unique things that most other cards just don't do. Not only is this like reanimator for instant and sorceries, you put something big in the bin and then cheat it out, or you can just play Spellslinger value and reuse instants and sorceries over time. It's also phenomenal with Sunforger because it puts this instant and sorcery on the bottom of your deck, allowing you to then re-tutor up the same one with Sunforger again. Commanders like this might lack raw power, but when you build around it, the synergies of your deck and value engines you build with it can still be very powerful. And playing a lesser known commander like this just has so many benefits. Players don't know what your deck is trying to do, so they might underestimate how strong it is. And they probably won't focus down Quintorius Loremaster as much as they would 
try to go after a true lane deck because the theoretically stronger commander seems like a more apparent threat. And many of these underrated commanders are very budget friendly since they're playing a lot of cards that don't see as much play in the wider scope of commander. And not having a crazy snowball commander that is kill on sight means you're gonna have less of those feast or famine type games. And I think we're in luck. It looks like Wizards is doubling down on printing some weirder commanders. Thunder Junction has a lot of interesting cards already. Riku gives you value when you cast modal spells, which is something we really haven't seen much. And he doesn't give raw card draw, it's impulse draw. So unless you impulse into another modal spell, you can't chain it forever. And once you impulse into something that's not a modal spell, you're incentivized to play it so you don't lose the impulsed card. Meaning unlike some of these other commanders, he doesn't snowball out of control. Yeah, the other benefits are just power on board, which isn't super fascinating, but I think it's still a really unique thing that it requires. The new Obeka is also very cool. By herself, she does essentially nothing, just gives you more upkeeps. But that means you need to build around how you want that effect to work. You can play things that just trigger on upkeep, but you could also play a suspend deck and have your suspended cards come down even faster. Heck, you could make this a shrine deck, throw a couple of those in there and get some extra value, maybe a few enchantment copy effects. You might think it's a tad hypocritical, uh, why am I mad at the shrine deck that asks for something really specific and not these two, but I think that these are a little more open-ended than shrines. And since they're not in five colors, it does mean, yeah, for now, Riku being the only modal commander means one Riku deck might look somewhat similar to another Riku deck, but they could print a different color combination card that also cares about modal spells, and suddenly we have a huge variance in this theme. Ultimately, I really want to stress, I don't actually care what deck you play. If you play Atraxa, in fact, that's fine. I really don't mind. But I hope next time you build a zombie tribal deck, Maybe instead of building the 18,000th Wilhelm deck, try something else. Gisa and Geralf, or Micaeus the Unhallowed. Something a little less popular. I just really want to encourage players to try new things, different builds, and hopefully with the increase in just number of commanders we get every year, I think it'll diversify the legends we see. Maybe I'm just nostalgic for the old school commander, where you were building around weird legendary cards that just couldn't hack it in standard or modern. And that's something that I think is lacking from a lot of modern commander decks. Thinking outside the box with a card that was not designed for the format. But of course, as always, this is just my opinion. So what do you think? When you see the Ur Dragon, do you just sigh because you know they're going to drop the same dragons you saw in the last nine Ur Dragon decks? Or does it not bother you? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so very much for watching. And special thanks to my patrons. Two, three patrons are here on screen. If you want to be in the credits, join the Patreon.